Hi, this is Jared Ross in Tallahassee, Florida with True Crime MTN, bringing you my latest video on the Danny Markell murder case. This one's gonna be a little bit different than my past uh, videos that I've done. Um, I've been bringing you some analysis and commentary on what we've been seeing uh, happening with this case, uh, talking about the previous trials, talking about some evidence that we've seen. Uh, and I'm not gonna do that today. Uh, today, uh, I wanna talk to you more about something that I'm very passionate about, and that is Justice for Dan Inc. And I'll get to that in a second, um, but, First, I want to say, if you don't know anything about this case, if you don't know about the Danny Markell murder case and the uh, subsequent trials that have occurred since, um, Google it, look, up, uh, look it up on YouTube. There are several videos um, about this case. Uh, I don't want to go deep into that. Um, just know that it is a very intricate case. There's a lot of uh, twists and turns, um, and I highly suggest that you catch up on that before you watch this video. Secondly, I want to talk a little bit more about my connections to the case. I know many of you know, um, you know what my connection to the case is, um, but I want to give you a brief, brief background um, for those of you that may not know. I live here in Tallahassee, Florida, uh, where the murder took place. Uh, but before that, before I moved to Tallahassee to attend Florida State University, uh, I lived in South Florida, in Coral Springs, Florida. Um, where I went to high school. I graduated high school from J.P. Taravella High School. Uh, and when I moved to Florida, uh, before my sophomore year of high school, I was quickly introduced to Wendy Adelson. Um, we had mutual friends. Uh, some of the few people that I knew at the time when I first moved there introduced me to her. And, um, you know, it was kind of a, uh, you know, a high school setup. Um, and uh, yes, we went on a date. Uh, and, and that was it. That was the extent of it. It was not like, you know, anything serious, but we became friends. Um, and then I was introduced to her brother, uh, who was in the same grade as me in high school. Um, and we both graduated in 1995. As happens uh, when you graduate high school, you lose touch with certain people. Um, you know, I became friends with other people that knew Wendy, but her and I were not, you know, close or anything like that. Charlie and I went to different colleges. He went to the University of Central Florida. I went to Florida State University. Um, and we just, you know, didn't keep connected. In 2005, uh, my then girlfriend, now wife, we went down to South Florida for my 10 year anniversary or 10 year uh, high school reunion um, and reconnected with, with Charlie. He was there as well. We hung out with a group um, at the reunion and after the reunion, a group of us hung out, um, had a good time. Uh, and he and I stayed a little bit in touch after that. And just a couple of weeks later, um, I was back at school for my last year of law school. Um, I was upstairs uh, getting ready to go to a trial advocacy class and looked over and there was a very familiar looking girl there. And we looked at each other and realized, oh my gosh, it's Wendy. Um, you know, and she realized who I was and we reconnected and quickly we became friends again. Um, it was nice for her to see a familiar face in a new town. She was doing her third year of law school as a visiting student, even though she was enrolled at University of Miami Law School. She was finishing up here at FSU. Uh, she introduced me to her then fiance, uh, Danny Markell. I had heard the name, but I hadn't really met him. He was a, a criminal law professor and I was not doing criminal law. Um, but we became fast friends. And then when my now wife moved to Tallahassee after she finished law school out of state, uh, the four of us connected and got along great. And we were invited to their house for their housewarming for um, several Jewish holidays and some other events. And uh, that's how I uh, got to know Wendy and Danny. And uh, when they, you know, they had kids, we had kids. Um, you tend to not see each other as much uh, as our kids didn't go to the same preschools or anything like that, uh, but we still kept in touch. And, you know, we'd get an email or a text and, you know, obviously the, the Facebook birthdays and things like that. It was, you know, still a very cordial relationship. Um, but uh, then um, July 18th, uh, 2014 occurred. And I remember sitting in my office and reading on Tallahassee Democrats website, there had been a shooting on Trescott. And the next morning I woke up uh, and saw a friend of mine post on Facebook 
that it was Danny. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. And you've all, uh, many of you have heard me tell the story. Uh, my wife was pregnant with our son at the time. I went into the bedroom and I said, uh, it was Danny. And she was like, what? And I said, it was Danny uh, who was shot and he, he died. And she just looked at me and said, it was a hit. It, it was a hit. And, you know, I get chills thinking about that now, but she knew it. I didn't want to believe it uh, at the time, but uh, certainly uh, it, it changed a lot of things. And um, so since then, you know, we've all been following the case. Um, I've had the opportunity to speak out publicly on the case. And that brings me to what I want to talk about today. And that is the Justice for Dan Inc., um, Jason Solomon, shortly after Danny's death, uh, created this organization, this Facebook page, uh, to keep people up to date on what was going on and, and to create a community uh, for those that wanted to see justice brought in Danny's name. Uh, and he did a great job. And uh, at one point, he brought on another person, Karen Cyphers, uh, to help uh, build that, uh, that community and, and to get credible information out there. And as this has gone on, um, we've realized that there are a lot of people that have passion for this and we want to do more. And so uh, just last month, um, a, a group of us got together and we incorporated Justice for Dan Inc. And the mission uh, is really threefold. Uh, it is to advance justice for Danny Markell and his family. It is to memorialize Danny's life uh, and scholarship, and it is to serve as a resource for credible case updates and commentary. And that's what we are looking to do, um, and we are looking to to grow. Uh, you know what what has started as a, a grassroots Facebook community, and, and make sure that uh, we are doing just that, bringing justice for Danny Markell. There's a couple of things though I want to make sure that that we make clear on this. The first thing is. As of right now, Justice for Dan is not a 501c3. It is not a nonprofit charitable organization. So any of the um, donations that we receive are not tax deductible. And I want to be clear about that. Um, we are not a for-profit organization. We are not looking to make money, um, but we are not a 501c3 charitable organization. So just want to be clear. Number two, I want to be clear that uh, the money that we do raise is going to go to advocacy efforts to bring justice for Danny. Um, that does not include uh, money going to his boys um, or the Markel family. That is not what the money will be used for. And I want to make sure that we are clear about that. Um, you know, we are working on some projects, which I will bring more uh, information about in the future. And uh, that is what this money will be used for. It will be used to, to help support the projects that will keep Danny's legacy and scholarship alive. Um, so, so again, the money is not going to go to the boys. They're going to be taken care of in, in other ways that, that have nothing to do with this. It is not going to go to the Markell family. Um, but you will, uh, you will find out where the money is going and it will be for good causes. I, I promise you that. Um, a little bit of background on the board. Um, obviously, Jason and and Karen, um, who who really helped uh, you know start this grassroots movement, they are are serving as as co directors. And then I was asked to join um, as someone who was friends with Danny, um, who has you know done commentary on this case and and you know knows the ins and outs of it. And then Tamara Demko, who many of you have heard of, uh, she was a dear friend of Danny's, um, had, had gone to law school with him, uh, knew him here in the community, also knew Wendy. Um, Tamara is our fourth director as well. Um, so we are a, a group of people that are extremely interested in ensuring that Danny's life and legacy are memorialized um, and that we are doing what we can uh, to bring justice for Danny Markell. So if you are uh, so kind to donate um, to, to help this cause, we appreciate it. Uh, we thank each and every one of you that, that speaks out, um, that, that brings uh, more awareness um, to this case and, and to the need uh, to hold those responsible accountable. To the other uh, content creators out there who um, uh, you know, follow this case and cover this case, we cannot thank you enough. Um, without you, uh, I wouldn't be making this video right now. 
Um, this is, is it's a case that has gotten international uh, coverage, um, and it's all because of the the amazing content creators um, who are out there. I would start naming some, but I would inevitably miss some people, and I'm not going to do that. Um, I just want to thank each and every one of you and each of you that continues to watch these videos and others. Um, keep it up. Please continue uh, to, to keep Danny and his family in your thoughts, um, and we will see justice for Danny Markell. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman, here on the fastest-growing true crime channel, True Crime MTN, and we'll see you next time.